nuclear particles are passing through, they, they vaporize, they, they make vaporized tra um, vapor trails, so that you can see, see these particles um, moving through that evacuated space. And, and, um, and of course, particle physics tells us that, uh, that there are particles doing that everywhere. And I, um, uh, because um, uh, I see this um, as a space which, which you know, as, as the layers built up, build up is um, uh, uh, is a series um, series of marks a bit like particles which are, which which are just you know shooting in and out of the space really yeah and then you know as you as you build the canvas up and um, um, and particles and uh, the um, the marks disappear under under marks underneath, but um, over the top, you can still see, um, uh, you can still imagine, and you and you know that they are uh, that that there is paint underneath, and um, in fact, you know you're building, um, you're building uh, the canvas towards you. Um, uh, with Project, yes, the way that you work at the beginning of it, as you progress, it becomes more compounded and more complex in your mind and um, or in my mind so you lose that initial improvisation thing i'm not suggesting that i can see that in the picture at all but i wondered if that was in your mind that you're more conscious of how you're responding and i've learned like a hell that. of a lot yeah that's that's right about about collaborating in, in, in that kind of way yes tremendous amount um, but I, I'd like to make the point. I t t tell you, I don't know what you feel, Barry, but actually, I feel much freer today for a number of reasons. Partly because of what we missed. I'm sorry, I have to say this. <laughs> we started the whole session. Barry obviously wanted to give me some more space, so he did f all for the first <laughs> ten minutes, which was actually quite interesting because we we talked about this. It's gone on seriously now. Yeah, no, no, we talked about this, and, and actually that's allowed us so much more freedom, and, and Barry's doing much more um, acoustic stuff himself, and I'm leaving him in the full knowledge we've actually talked through this possibility, and that it's okay, because it's not something that you, you ha we're waiting to happen, we've already talked about it, so that's leaving me freer, but funnily enough, I'm actually doing more within this freedom, I'm actually doing more quotes than ever I did. Right, the first one, we were meant to be at our freest. Yeah. Um, sorry, we were probably our most unreal, well, we didn't have a vocabulary together live, mm. did we? No. And it was almost, it was all um, totally abstract, if you like, whatever that means. But actually, with each session, I introduced a few constraints or a few um, um, uh, parameter um, tunes. And I don't know whether anyone heard, but I think the jangle in the piano, and I was looking at the painting, and I got this terrible sort of end of, of um, end of sort of fantasy Eclair Malerian wave came over me. So I, I did quote from, uh, from the fourth symphony. Or was it the fifth? I always get confused, the fifth. Did you so quote from wave as well? I thought I had a little bit of wave. No. no, absolutely no not. But, <laughs> but if, if you didn't hear that, I did actually play the theme from, from Death in Venice, so <laughs> no one heard it. No one heard it? Oh, I got away with it. I wish I had mentioned it. Oh, damn. So um, that, along with Danny Boy in the first set, is funny because I'm playing... Uh, I, feel at my fr I feel like I can do loads. I can leave you on your own. I can play anything and funnily enough it's actually producing what some people would class as less abstract music. But I don't really care what but I just thought that might be an interesting mm. thought it's to interject. Yeah. It certainly freed me up and uh, <laughs>